Okay, g'day there, trendsetters. So welcome to part two of Robert Bly's story of the lindworm. So where we left off was that the woodchopper's daughter was going to seek counsel from the female elder. And there we touched on the idea that perhaps the, field, the female elder represents the feminine aspect of a Rebbe, of the Rebbe, of the Tzaddik, the Nasi Hador, seeking counsel. And what's also important is that there's an overlap with that mushal, that allegory, in seeking counsels from elders who might not be of Rebbe status. Often the Lubavitch Rebbe, when he would get letters seeking advice and counsel, he would tell individuals to go get advice from learned friends in the matter. And in Robert Bly's book, The Sibling Society, he laments the fact that, as it were, we've rejected the significance of elders and the wisdom that they have to offer us, as well as the wisdom of those who preceded us many generations ago. And then that kind of perspective leads us to not even consider the future generations to come from us and what kind of world we're shaping for them. So coming back to the idea of seeking counsel from a wise woman in what this uh, woodchopper's daughter is doing, we have the idea that was actually brought in today's Rumba, the 12th of Nissan if you're learning one chapter a day, in that what is a female elder? According to the Rambam, a female elder, uh, somebody who's come of age, is somebody who is regarded as an elder by, their, by her peers, and she doesn't protest that, that assessment. So I think it's wise for us to seek counsel and wisdom from those who've got many years under their belt and, and experience, perhaps even some battle scars, and they can teach us a few things. And we have to seek them out, but they have to be well regarded by the community and they cannot protest their, their status uh, and be willing and open to give that advice. And I don't think many world leaders on the world stage would actually qualify as elders if we held them up to this metric. So what does the wise woman tell the woodchopper's daughter? Now bear in mind the woodchopper's daughter undertook this mission to marry the snake groom with full confidence before she'd even consulted this elder because she knew that she would find the answer in this elder. So what does the elder tell the woodchopper's daughter to do? Again, the woodchopper coming to signal to us that from the forest itself comes the handle from the ax and that we're gonna to need to approach this with the degree of simplicity, with the degree of, as it were, stubbornness, a degree of Pshita, simple, simple faith, mysterious nefesh, self-sacrifice, following orders from above. The wise woman tells the woodchopper's daughter to do two things. First, she has to postpone the marriage for eight months. And the second thing is during this time, she should prepare and embroider seven beautiful garments to wear at the wedding, seven beautiful matrimonial shirts. Now, these numbers are beautiful. The first one, eight. Eight is always transcendence. It's one above the natural order of things. The natural order of things is seven. There are seven colors of the rainbow, seven waves in a set. We have seven days of the week. We have other ideas of seven, I believe, in music, etc., etc., etc. Excuse me. One above that, transcending that natural order of things is eight. And this is why young Jewish boys have their bris milah, their covenant, their circumcision on the eighth day. It's a level of transcending the intellect and the ordinary things. And we do it on the eighth day so that a child should know that no matter what, even when intellectually nothing makes sense, it doesn't make sense to stay believing. It doesn't make sense to stay adhering to Torah and mitzvahs. We need to transcend that and rise above that and adhere. And this kind of transcendent covenantal love is what has kept the Jewish people connected to Torah and mitzvahs and God under all circumstances, under all crucibles, including the crucible of Egypt. And I just want to take a little tangent here, and I understand that there's a group of individuals, I think they're called loop, and they're individuals who believe that as a result of their circumcision, they've suffered severe trauma. And maybe that's true. But if they think that that's their only trauma, if they think that's their only wound, as far as I think this story goes and stories like I and John and some IFS work, if they believe that this is their only wound, I don't think they're looking hard enough. 
and that's worthy of consideration. And of course, it goes without saying that we do a bris milah, not for rational reasons and not for medical reasons, but there are medical benefits which literally save lives, both for Jewish men and the Jewish women that they're married to in lower rates of cancer, of cervical cancer and also cancer of the penis. So that's just a little tangent. So coming back to the little idea of eight, I think this is a beautiful message that if we're going to come to a relationship and in every relationship there are parts of us that are like the snake, that want to undermine the relationship or are not comfortable with being married and parts of our partner that have the same. If we want to encounter this, we're going to have to, one, take a bit of time. It's going to take time. Okay, eight months is a long time. And bear in mind, this is the 13th bright. This is the 13th, again, Yud Gimel Midas Rachamim, 13 attributes of mercy. But we've tried this a lot. We've got to give it a bit of patience like the Guns N' Roses song, covered very nicely by Chris Cornell. Patience, it's a beautiful song, you can listen to it. We're gonna need some patience, and patience is a P word which is also related to the Nefesh HaSichlis, self-energy. So we've gotta give it some time, eight months. We're also gonna to have to tap into transcendent covenantal love. We're gonna to have to realize that we're gonna to have to endure things that might be beyond natural, beyond intellectual. And the level of eight is brought in the wedding ceremony. Now, how is it brought in the wedding ceremony? This idea of transcendental love, going above. The bride goes around the groom seven times. Ah, you might ask, that's seven, that's not eight. Where's the eight? The eighth, the eighth level of makif, of transcendence, of understanding there are things beyond us that we cannot fully grasp, but we can grasp that we cannot grasp them. That is when the, the, the groom, the chassan, gives a ring to the bride, which envelops her, it transcends her, it's soivev. And so therein is a beautiful message as well, that, that the bride is bringing her feminine energy and transcending and going, you know, circumnavigating the groom. And the groom is also tapping into his feminine energy and giving it to the bride. And together they make eight. And together they tap into this level of transcendence. So I believe that's the, a, a bit on the level of eight. Now, what does the woodchopper's daughter need to do before she goes in to engage with the snake groom, the worm, this terrifying monster? She needs to make seven beautiful garments of her own. She needs to do some of her own rectifying, her own inner work, her own parts work to beautify her seven midas, her chesed guru tiferes netzachod yisod. Garments levushim are our machshava dibor on maisa, our thoughts, our speech and our action, which really make up what, what is our personality. Our personality is nothing more than a manifestation of our thoughts, speech and action. And that can be refined, that can be changed. I don't believe it's stagnant. I believe we can do a degree of refinement and we can move where we are on the bell curve, according to the big five personality traits, through self-refinement of our seven attributes. And indeed, coming into Passover, between Pesach and Shavuos, it's all about refinement of the seven midas. And we can't escape it. You can come to Kabbalah kicking and screaming, or you can come happily. And in every Siddur across the Jewish world, when we count the Omer, the Sfirah Omer, right there is the, the, the Kabbalah of the Midos. We have the day, the first day is Chesed, Sheba Chesed, etc., etc. And then we come to Gvura of Chesed, and we refine ourselves. So... This is the task that the, that the woodchopper's daughter needs to embark on before she is ready to come to terms with the snake, uh, the snake groom.